You're on a path in the- You're here to slay- You make your way up the short path. A warning. She will lie. We're not going to go through with this, right? Ignore him. The interior of the cabin. The blade is your... You take the blade from the table. The door to the basement. Her voice carries up the stairs. Who's there? She sounds dangerous. It's almost as if she's the one in charge down here. Don't let it fool you. Oh, it's been so long since anyone's come down here. I was starting to think they'd forgotten about me. You walk down the stairs and lock eyes with the princess. She's so coldly beautiful. Focus on the task at hand. And there you are. Are you here to kill me or something? How about you drop the knife and the two of us just talk? Look how reasonable she's being. We should just drop the blade and talk things out. Don't you dare. It's fine. We can decide what we want to do after we talk to her. Maybe she really is a monster. But killing someone in cold blood isn't very becoming of us. You ignore the trembling in your hands and tighten your grip on the blade. You poor thing. Your hands are shaking. Are you scared of me? Because you should be. You step forward your grip on the blade tightening as you steal your resolve. I'm probably chained up in this basement for a reason, right? And if that knife is the only weapon you have, you'll have to get close enough to use it. So, you should just drop it. Best not to risk finding out what I can do. She's unarmed. If you hesitate now, it'll be too late. End this. Then I'm not talking to you. You stare at the princess, squinting. She squints back. The two of you are going to do this forever, aren't you? You squint even harder. So does she. At least nobody's dying right now. You're going to have to make a choice. You can't keep squinting forever. Eventually, someone is going to have to blink. Doubt, unfortunately, clouds your thoughts as you attempt to run her through. A moment of distraction and hesitation is all she needed to sidestep your thrust and deliver a catastrophic blow to your jaw. It feels like you've been hit with a sledgehammer. You can feel bone grinding on bone where your jaw has been fractured. Holy shit, that hurt! Though she's unarmed, the shock of that first strike is enough to stagger you, putting you and the princess on somewhat equal footing. Your blade slashes through the air again and again, and her fists connect with your body as many times or more, each impact as heavy as that first bone-crushing hit. We can still turn this around. You and the princess stare at each other, both gasping for breath, equally exhausted. You probably won't make it out of here alive, but you can at least make sure that she won't make it out of here. Either. Excuse me? Do you think this is what I wanted to happen? I have a duty to state the facts of the situation, and honestly, it's a miracle anyone is still standing right now. Can you not feel all those ruptured organs bouncing around in there? If the princess doesn't do our friend in herself, internal bleeding is certain to finish the job. 
The two of you clash for the final time. You feel your ribs break as she delivers a heavy blow, but you push through the pain, falling forward and sinking your blade deep into the princess's heart. Oh. The two of you fall to the floor. This was fun. The princess gasps. Her voice an unhealthy rasp as her lungs start to fill with blood. You put up more of a fight than I thought you would. But I have to wonder, do you really think this is the end? But you don't have time to worry over such things. Everything goes dark, and you die. You're on a path in the woods. You're here to slay her. A warning. She will lie. Lying and cheating doesn't sound like her at all. Are you sure about that? The point of my warning wasn't to start an argument. The princess will do and say whatever she thinks it will take to get her out of there. Crystal. Let's just get on with it already. The cabin is tighter than its exterior would suggest. Its cold stone walls press in on you, as if trying to forcefully direct you towards your destination. The only furniture of note is a black iron altar, with a pristine blade perched on its edge. The blade is your implement. No knife this time. Right then, fisticuffs it is. Probably more fair to her anyway. As long as you can still get the job done. And don't forget that the blade is waiting for you upstairs if you happen to change your mind. The door to the basement creaks open, revealing a rough stone staircase, its walls pressing at your sides and tightening as you descend. The air seeping from below is heavy and oppressive. Her fierce voice carries up the stairs. Is that another challenger? Finally! It's been ages since I've had a good fight. This isn't what she sounded like last time. Her voice is a little deeper, almost threatening. Good. Sounds like my kind of princess. As much as I appreciate the enthusiasm, just make sure you don't let your bloodlust get to your head. You need to stay focused and keep your- As you descend the final step, the form of the princess comes into view. A large shackle leading from her wrist to the basement wall. Looks like she could rip those chains out of the wall without a second thought. Oh, it's you again. I've been hoping you'd find your way back here. Good to see that death doesn't stick for either of us. But no little knife this time, huh? No, I hope you're not just here to chat. I've been itching for a rematch. Aside from your empty hands, you look exactly the same. Alright, fine. If you're not going to address it, I will. What? You've already met the princess, the princess has already met you. Maybe. You did seem to just gloss over the whole thing for a while. Of course I glossed over it. You don't know. Whatever brought the two of you back to life isn't a fluke. Uh, are you okay? Of course I'm not okay! As far as we're all concerned, the fate of my world is still very much on the line. I know. You and the princess have been talking about it. You don't have to be so snarky. Her. You want? <sighs> I don't know why I'm even bothering, to be honest. You... Who says I want to be free? Yeah, I'm fine right where I am. 
Okay, hold on. Did you hear that? Maybe we don't have to do anything. If she's fine where she is, maybe... As long as you go back upstairs, pick up that knife, and fight me to the death. Never mind. There is no happy ending where everyone makes it out of this place alive. Hear that? Between him and her, that should be all the motivation. No. Pick up the blade and slay her. You're being a bit semantic, aren't you? I am, but it's an important distinction. Fine. As long as it leads to a fight, do whatever he just said. Why? You didn't want to talk last time. Are you scared I'm going to kill you again? No, oh, I remember you all right. Best three minutes of my life. So, why don't we do it again? Or are you scared I'm going to put you down for good this time? Are you just going to let her talk to us like that? I think my position on violence in this situation is already more than clear. I agree. If we're gonna fight her, we need a weapon. What is there to unpack? I was dead and now I'm not and the same goes for you. There. Unpacking done. Don't you get it? We've been given free reign to wail on each other. Forever. Couldn't have said it better myself. And why not? You decided what to do with me quickly enough last time. Are you scared I'm going to kill you again? Maybe you're worried I'll put you down for good this time. If you want to talk, I guess I can talk. But you should come a little closer first. You take a cautious step towards the princess, unarmed. I wish I could believe you know what you're doing, but you clearly don't. You stop a few feet short of her reach, her chains taut as she stares down at you. She's a lot bigger than I thought she was. Why do you sound so scared? We can take her. Well, what do you want? Because every second we waste talking is a second we could spend killing each other instead. What are you trying to do? Do you think pacifism is going to win her over? Because it won't. Right? This isn't fun. This isn't interesting. It's pathetic and cowardly and boring. Is that so? Let's see if you still feel that way once I start beating you. She's still bound by those chains. All we have to do is take a step back and she won't be able to do anything to us. All that does is put the two of you at another impasse. You can't stall forever. Ah! <laughs> Bluffing, then why is she still? You step back as she steps forward, her bindings creaking ominously. And then they snap. It was only a matter of time, but she's loose. Dear Lord, what do we do? Oh, if only there was some sort of weapon you could use to fight a world ending monstrosity. I wonder where you might find one of those. Exactly. Just do what I've been telling you to do since the second we got here. Take the blade, fight her, kill her, and win. I suppose there isn't much I can do to stop you, is there? You stand your ground as the princess thunders across the basement floor, her shoulders tucked low as her fierce, unblinking gaze locks onto you. You can see the impact, and you can't say for sure if you even feel it, but you hear your bones splinter 
and you can feel your feet leave the floor as you're hurled bodily into the unflinching stone wall. We're fine. Are we fine? Are we really? No, you're obviously not fine. Your body is broken. Enough games. Go upstairs, pick up that knife, and fight me. Stop moping, you're fine. Now get up. What are you made of? Tissue paper? I didn't hit you that hard. Is this a trick? Are you tricking me? Because why would you? Why wouldn't you? Gah! The princess's shoulders tense with fury as she storms towards you. You can see her face flush, her knuckles going white as she clenches her fists, her entire body trembling with a burning rage. I can't believe you're making me watch this. Fine. If you want to die like a pathetic little worm, you can die like a pathetic little worm. I guess I'll see you all next time. She reaches down and grabs you by the throat, lifting your limp form and slamming it forcefully against the wall. Her eyes twitch as her grip tightens around your neck. She sure is taking her time, isn't she? Why? Why are you letting me do this? Why are you making me do this? Why won't you fight back? Trying to make me think. Her grip hardens. But you feel a horrific pop in your neck. She releases you, your numb body crumpling to the stone floor as your vision starts to fade. What am I supposed to do without you? I guess I'll see you all next time. I can say that now, right? We're dead? Great. I can't wait to be stuck in this useless body all over again. I won't be seeing you, but... I suppose something like me will. Everything goes dark, and you die. You're on a path in the woods, and at the end of that path... Oh, I've heard this one before. Oh, you bloody fool. Am I the only one here who actually listened to her? And we're not going to give it to her. You think what happened last time was funny? I thought we were breaking a cycle of violence. Ah, we're a deep and multifaceted being. Who's to really say that your thing and my thing can't peacefully coexist? I'm just saying, doing it for a laugh takes away from the moment. It was a good moment. Oh, will both of you just shut up? <laughs> Make me rage, boy. Well, this is just great. <sighs> Let me cut to the chase. Yeah, you think? What does here even mean, though? You've told us about the path of the princess and all of that already, but this is a very different path from the last one. That's a good point. Everything here is a little... off. Yes, precisely. And if you'd given me two seconds to finish my thought, I would have said that. Oh, you're actually letting me talk now. Great. If you've already been here, it means you've seen things you aren't supposed to have seen, and so you knew this could happen. You knew we'd be able to restart like this. I know all sorts of things, which is why you should listen to me. That's not really an answer. <sighs> Look, if the world around you is changing, especially all the way out here, then that means you're nearing the point of no return. Whatever happens next, that's it. There won't be any more do-overs. So you'd better take things seriously. But what about... No. Quiet. You're just confusing everyone for the sake of it. Don't worry. We only need this one last go. You'd better hope that's true. And don't let that inflated ego get in the way of doing your job. Good. We're all on the same page. It isn't long before you find yourself at the end of the path, staring up at the cabin on the hill. You'll find the princess within, as I'm sure you already know. End her. That's it? No final words of advice? I'd rather not waste any more time. I'm sure that any advice I'd give at this point is something you've already heard. Don't be so hard on yourself. We all wind up in creative ruts now and then. I'm sure if you put your mind to it, you could think of something worth telling us. The 
The interior of the cabin is a place that feels long forgotten. There was once an elegance to its construction, carved marble columns holding a high arched roof, vaulted windows letting in the weak starlight. But that is how it was. Now there is a growth that has overtaken it. A viscous fluid seeps from cracks in the stone walls, and it congeals into chaotic streaks of writhing nerves and wet clumps of living meat. That's horrible. I think it's kind of nice. Makes the room feel alive, doesn't it? The only furniture of note is a pulsating pedestal. A pristine blade perched on its edge. The blade is your implement. We'll need it if we want to do things right. Let's not make the same mistake twice. You step forward and approach the door to the basement. All we see is a damn mirror. It's a bit grimy. Why don't we wipe it clean? Wipe what clean? The door? The mirror. What are you talking about? You're standing in front of a door. But it has to be real. It's right there. Does it matter if it's actually real or not? Let's just smash it and get it over with. I'm ready to get violent. We won't be able to see what's in there if we smash it. Do whatever you want with it. The mirror isn't real, so how you handle it doesn't matter, aside from wasting dangerous amounts of time. You reach forward and drag your hand across the door leading to the basement. As if on command, it slowly slides open, scraping against the stone floor, its ancient hinges moaning as it reveals the dim path ahead. Why am I not surprised? You step forward into the darkness. The stairs leading down to the basement are at once both narrow and grandiose. The high vaulted ceiling stretches up into a gloom beyond your sight, while walls wet with tumorous growths press in uncomfortably at your sides. You feel both unprotected and trapped, at once exposed and claustrophobic. The air is thick, its odor an oppressive violence. The metallic scent of fresh blood twisting with the nauseating embers of charred remains. If the princess lives here, slaying her is probably doing her a favor. Her voice, a bellowing rage, roars up the stairs. So you've returned after denying me the salvation of combat? Are you here to gloat? Are you here to mock what I've become? Do you think that if you let me kill you enough times, I'll suddenly soften and repent for sins that live solely in your head? Well, we've tried that, haven't we? Now come down and see what your refusal has done to me. See how much you can bear to witness the consequences of your actions. Do you hear that? Well, sounds like we got to her last time. Let's keep pushing, see what else we can make happen. You make your way to the bottom of the stairs. The chamber's walls are painted in blood, a deep, sickening red that drips down in clotted streams onto the charred corpses that make up its floor. This place reeks of torment, of ripped skin and burning bone. The princess stands in its center, muscles flayed and bare and weeping, draped in a tattered dress of her own skin. Her heart beats from its place in her open chest. Do you know what I'm going to do to you? There's not so much a moment of hesitation before she steps forward. Her chains pull taut, holding fast as she strains against them. The cuff around her wrist digs deeper into her skin. Blood drips from the place where metal meets flesh. And then, with a nauseating sound, the skin tears. It plops to the ground. She pulls her red, glistening arm free from her bindings. She is loose, and she is coming for you. She wants us to be afraid, because she wants us to think she can make us suffer. Now give her the satisfaction. That's right, no fear. She's bigger than the last time, but she's pulling herself apart. She's practically done most of the work for us. We don't even have a weapon. It doesn't matter. Time happened. You happened. But none of that matters. We're together again and I'll have what you denied me. She bounds across the room, her fists ready, her heart set upon your destruction. Horrifying squelch. You are unwound.
I hope you weren't planning on dying. We're going to make this last forever. Huh. I feel cold. I've never felt cold before. She's gone. Where does she go? And there's that mirror up there. I'm begging you. This... this doesn't feel right. Yeah, don't look at it. I screw the mirror. We just need to find... Something finds me in the long quiet, and brings me the gift of a fragile vessel. Nothing as we are, but I there is no exit. Bring me more perspective. She asks that I tell you to remember her. You won't. You're on a path in the woods, and you're here to slay her. You make your way up the short path to the cabin, a warning. She will lie. We're not gonna go through with this, right? Ignore him. The interior of the cabin is almost into the blade is your implement. You take the blade from door to the basement, her voice carries up the... Who's there? She sounds dangerous. It's all... Don't let it fool you. Don't be a stranger. It's been so long since I've had any visitors. Come on down. You walk down the stairs. She's so coldly beautiful. Focus on the task at hand. And there you are. Are you here to kill me or something? How about you drop the knife, and the two of us just... talk? Look how reasonable she's being. Don't you dare. It's fine. We can... You ignore the trembling in your hands, and tighten your grip on the blade. You poor thing. Your hands are shaking. You step forward. Your gr I'm probably chained up in this basement for a reason, right? And if that knife is the only... So, you should just drop it. Best. She's unarmed. Then I'm not talking to you. You stare at the princess, squinting. She squints back. The two of you are gonna do... You squint even hard. So does she. At least nobody's dying right now. You're going to have to make a choice. Doubt, unfortunately. A moment of distraction and hesitation is all she needed. It feels like you've been hit with a sledgehammer. Holy shit, that hurts! Though she's unarmed, the shock of that first strike is enough to stagger you. Putting your blade slashes through the air. We can still turn this around. Are you serious? As internal bleeding sets in, the blade falls from your trembling hands, clattering to the ground uselessly. You lacked the will to finish the job, your bruised and broken body falling to its knees before her. The princess, exhausted, chest heaving with heavy breaths, tosses the blade away from you. This is the end, isn't it? 
Is this really the best you could do? Look at you. Completely broken. I'd be lying if I said I wasn't a little disappointed. She plants her foot on your chest and pushes you onto your back, the air leaving your lungs in a heavy puff. And then she brings her knee to your throat. She leans into it with the kind of weight you didn't think her slight frame could possibly possess, shattering your windpipe and leaving you starved for breath. It's too bad. I was looking forward to some company. Everything goes dark, and you die. You're on a path in the woods. You're here to slay her. A warning. She will lie. We might as well just pledge ourselves to her. Can we tone down the pessimism just a smidge? I'm not being a pessimist. I'm just being realistic. You're being annoying. Just ignore their bickering and whatever you do, don't pledge yourself to her. I agree. If she's wrongfully imprisoned, then we should rescue her, but... If he's telling the truth, we shouldn't just hand her the war. Rescue her, given the stakes of the situation. So please, try to ignore both of those knuckleheads and focus on saving the world. If that's what you want, I guess I don't have a say here. The interior of the cabin is larger and more grandiose than its humble exterior would suggest. The only furniture of note is a massive marble altar with a pristine blade perched on its edge. The blade is your implement. Why do we feel so small? We don't feel small. We are small. No blade this time. Yeah. Maybe she'll be more receptive if we're unarmed. Blade. No blade. It doesn't matter. The door to the basement creaks open, revealing a spiral staircase. It steps almost as deep as you are tall. The smell of incense drifts up from below. For a moment, you almost feel at ease. Huh. This is actually kind of nice. It's still a stone basement. If the princess lives here, slaying her is probably doing her a favor. Her booming voice rolls up the stairs. Is that a guest I hear? Don't linger on the stairs. Come down and witness me. You weren't kidding when you said it was booming. She wasn't like this last time. You shouldn't have come down here unarmed. We need to get down there. She wants us to see her. We need to see her. Should we be worried about your sudden change in attitude? Just a few minutes ago, you were going on about how pointless everything was. Now you want to go down there. It doesn't matter what that little voice says. He's not the one making the decisions. Making your way down the spiral staircase is a time-consuming and exhausting effort, every step requiring you to clamber over one edge before dropping to the next. But soon the end comes into view, and you tumble to the bottom, entering the vast, temple-like room beyond. The princess towers over you, almost glowing in the weak starlight, her figure framed by a stained glass window. Her long hair billows around her, and a chain binds her wrist to the far wall. The chain is nothing to her. It might as well be a toy for all the good it would do. I told you it was pointless to resist her. The little bird has returned to me. I wonder what he wants. I see your hands are empty. You've already given up, haven't you? You aren't even going to try and kill me. How sweet. And more than a little disappointing. She's disappointed in us? Neil. On her command, you fall to the floor, knees painfully connecting with hard stone. That's my good little bird. Now, why don't we talk? The last time we met, you tried to kill me. And yet here you are again, this time groveling at my feet. What a wretched sight. 
What draws you back here beyond the empty halls of death? Speak. The last time we met, nobody should have met her before this. You should be the first, you- Then you shouldn't have trusted us. There was nothing we could do to stop her then. And there's nothing we can do to stop her now. He's being melodramatic, but yeah, we've been here before and she absolutely destroyed- That's worrying. Whatever you do, don't tell her why you're here. It's Serious. Just, just don't say anything. How hard can it be to not say anything? You haven't felt her angelic fingers run along the edges of your mind. You haven't felt her nails dig into your thoughts. You weak-willed buffoon. Is that so? Mm. The princess closes her eyes in contemplation. Something about that thought wraps itself around my heart. It feels like a fundamental truth to my being that I'd somehow forgotten. The collapse of the old is a necessary prelude to the birth of the new. And the world as it is now is overdue for... alterations. It's time for me to seize my destiny. And you, little bird, will help me seize it. She's inevitable. There's nothing else for us to do but help her. Maybe she'll be nice to us. Your will was so easily broken. Am I that magnificent? All you need to do now is break my chains. If this is what you want, then I guess there's not much else for me to say. No, you can't just give in to her. Not when the stakes are so high. Not when you're so close. I won't let you do this. There's still something in the way. A greasy film inside of you where it doesn't belong. Trying to conceal you from me. Is that a person? No, it used to be a person. It's something different now. An echo. Is... is she talking about you? That's impossible. She's not supposed to be able to interact with me, she... You're a small one, aren't you? A shriveling little worm stretched beyond its limits, trying to control things that it can't understand. I'm just... I don't care what you are. You're mine. Ah! Rise, my little bird. Without, Without hesitation, you're, you're brought, brought to your feet. feet. Break my chains. And how are we supposed to do that? We don't even have a weapon. All, All you need to do, do is believe it's been done. done. Her chains shatter, and the cuff falls from her wrist. She is loose, and the end is upon us. What a good disciple you are. Come, it's time for us to leave. She's gone. And is that a... This... This doesn't feel... I don't want to look at her. Flickering lights in empty cityscapes become pockets of vitality and movement. 
I am more than I was before. Whenever you are ready, I will wipe your slate clean once again. This one is Dominance, a figure capable of bending everything to her will. She will make for a terrifying and divine heart. Do not mourn her, for she would not be able to mourn you. The vessels are a weave of emotion at odds with themselves, but they are only perspectives. They are not me. The wounds they've suffered carve texture around my heart. Without them, I would be as I was before. I would be alone and without sensation. I could not feel the joy of having you by my side, for I would not know your absence. your return, but it will give me time to reflect on what I am. We will meet again. <laughs>